Hello, everybody. I'm Lisa Catello, and I'm joined by Jennifer Turnbrick, and we are from Panorama Wellness Group. And um, I am the owner and director at Panorama Wellness Group. We are a group of um, counselors and a nutritionist right now, um, working out of Langley, both in person and online. And Jennifer, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Thanks, Lisa. So my name is Jennifer Turnbrook. I'm a therapist here at Panorama Wellness, and I am a registered clinical counselor. I work predominantly with people who are experiencing anxiety and uh... <laughs> and lots of other things too. And lots of other things. No. <laughs> One of the things that I think you are really good at in just in some of the conversations that we've had is understanding like how anxiety affects our life. And so everybody, every counselor has a little bit different niche. Um, and so the more that I've gotten to know you, it feels like, like that's something that actually gets you excited and you feel, it sounds like you get, you feel like you get success out of working with anxiety and all the different ways that that can show up. Um, would that be true? Definitely. Uh, anxiety and depression are the number one reason people come to talk with me. So I've had lots of opportunity over many decades to uh, hold those conversations and learn from those people that I've had the opportunity to work with. And I really do feel like they have taught me well around what works and what doesn't work with anxiety. Yeah. One of the things um, that seems to come up, and you just wrote a blog on this last month, is um, negative thoughts. And a lot of that can look differently for different people. Um, how would you describe what negative thoughts would be? Yeah, that's a great question. And I, I think uh, it's important to know that uh, most people experience a ton of thoughts throughout the course of the day. And depending on situations or experiences uh, or circumstances, people can certainly find that their thoughts tend towards the negative. And that is often associated with anxiety. I don't think I've ever had a client who presented with anxiety who didn't have negative thinking going on. So it's, it's, a, it's a, one of the hallmarks of anxiety. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just such a common issue. I wish more people understood how prevalent it is and how throughout the course of the day, we're all managing negative thoughts, but sometimes those thoughts are so hmm, loud and strong and prolific that they get the better of us. They start mm -hmm. to impact us. And uh, so uh, that's all. We're recording this in November. Um, no, it's December. Um, <laughs> it's one of those rainy months in Vancouver. Um, would you say that negative thoughts increase in the winter or around holidays, or is it pretty consistent for most people? Obviously, everybody has their own experience, but do you say it increases? Yeah, I think that there are... Uh certain things that make us more vulnerable to negative thinking that can occur. Uh, there are certain situations or circumstances, certainly in times like a pandemic, people are gonna have a lot more uncertainty, a lot more uh, fears or concerns. And so their thoughts may tend towards the negative. Uh, also, if we're really tired or stressed or stretched, such as during the holidays, uh, people might be more vulnerable to those negative thoughts, more influenced by them. Uh, and find it harder to manage them. So it does, as you said, it does depend on the individual and their experience, but uh, certainly there are circumstances and times of year that uh, can make it harder. Okay. One of the questions that I have, when I think of negative thoughts, um, I guess, like you said, we all deal with negative thoughts. Um, maybe it's the counselor in me, maybe I'm just don't understand entirely. Is there a difference between like intrusive thoughts and negative thoughts? Or are they both, are they the same thing? Right. Well, I'm trying to think if I've any, met, met, ever met anyone who had intrusive thoughts that weren't negative. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think people would describe thoughts that pop to mind that are positive as intrusive. <laughs> so yeah. I think generally when people are talking about intrusive thoughts, they're often negative. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, those typically, it's somebody who's grappling with negative thinking, but they're good at distracting themselves. Mm. And then at those moments where they're quiet or still or calm, or maybe before they go to fall asleep, yeah. there's nothing to distract them. So those thoughts sort of bubble up and they get louder and they take up a lot of space. Yeah. So maybe the negative thoughts are manageable, but intrusive might feel like, oh, I, I can't distract myself kind of thing. Yeah, and and so intrusive thoughts are typically negative when people are describing them as such, but they may be able to distract from yeah. them under certain circumstances, or they can learn how to manage them, which is part of what we're going to talk about. Yeah, that's a great lead way, like a great segue into like, yeah, sometimes we talk about like the struggles that we all have, but then how the hell do we stop doing that, right? Or how do we help ourselves? Um, and so obviously we think that counseling helps um, and getting specific um, support with your circumstance and your situation. But we, are there like maybe two or three things that you would typically recommend for people to try? Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, uh, I agree with you that counseling can be helpful, <laughs> but uh, there are lots of things that people can do all on their own. And the first one may not seem like it's uh, specifically about thought management, but uh, is, is the first thing to learn how to do or, get, or to practice is to calm yourself. And so usually I suggest to people that they can work on uh, developing some skills around belly breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. And that's a lovely way to help uh, the body come down from a bit of a heightened state, because when you've been thinking lots of really negative thoughts, it's, it's stressing, it's distressful, the body gets into a bit of a, a heightened state. And so when we do some nice deep belly breathing, that helps us come down from that heightened state. And it also helps the blood flow go back to the rational part of the brain. Mm. And you actually need the rational part of your brain to help you manage those thoughts. I think a lot of times we think, well, hey, we have to breathe in order to live. So obviously I'm breathing. Um, <laughs> but really like being, if you think about it, when you have some of those, that anxiety or the negative thoughts, you go, and then maybe you let it out or maybe you don't and, or it looks different for everybody. So I think that's a great example, a great first tip. Um, right. Yeah, it's practical. Yeah, and I mean, we could, do a, we could do a whole video like this on just belly breathing, I'm sure, but the, the simplest version of it for anybody who maybe doesn't know is in, to breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. And if your hand was on your diaphragm, you're trying to get your hand to be moving with your breath. And again, it's, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not something where you have to time how many times you do it or count the number of breaths. It can be useful just to practice it a few times throughout the course of the day till you notice some kind of change in your body, like maybe your shoulders come down a notch or two, or your heart rate slows a bit, or your mind quiets a bit. Yeah. And then, you, then you've practiced enough. Some clients that I work with find that that actually helps them uh, have a better sleep too if they try it before going to sleep and sometimes laying down it's actually easier to tell if your hand is going up and down too so yeah, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah any definitely. other tips that people could try with to help with negative thoughts well and so if you're able if you get good at practicing that belly breathing and you're able to calm yourself and you get the blood flow back in the rational part of your brain one of the next things that you can sort of add to your skills is to become an observer of your thoughts mm. so what that looks like is instead of just well actually i'll give you an, i'll give you an analogy uh, imagine when you were little, I don't know if you ever laid down on the grass and looked up at all the clouds and watched the clouds roll by. Yep. You ever do that? Yeah. Figure out different shapes and stuff. Yes, exactly. Now, of course, we can't touch the clouds. We can't change the clouds. We can't do anything to them. All we can do is observe them. And typically, we'd sort of move across the sky, whatever way the wind was blowing, those, those clouds would move. And they might change shape a little bit as they move. And we might name them. We, we might notice, oh, that looks like a bunny, or that looks like a peace sign, or 
whatever it is. So we would maybe name them if we recognize something, but we would just watch them go by. And that's what I'm referring that's what I'm referring to when I suggest that people could begin to observe or learn to observe their thoughts, mm. that you're just watching them. You might name them. Oh, that's a thought about a dry cleaning, or that's a thought about my to-do list, uh, or that's a thought about my presentation at work, but you're not trying to do anything with those thoughts. You're not trying to change them. You're not trying to hold on to them. You're just watching them. Yeah. That's a great tip. Uh, it takes practice too, hey? Absolutely, yes. All of these things are acquired skills, those first two in particular. And uh, so they're not light switches that you can just do. <laughs> they're something that you want to practice on a regular basis so you get better at them. Yeah. And one of the benefits of observing thoughts is that it increases your awareness of the patterns that might be connected to your thinking or yeah. when you're more vulnerable to them or when you manage them better. Uh, and so that information is really useful because it can help guide you in how you might begin to manage those thoughts. Okay. Awesome. Do you have a third one or is that good for now? Uh, no, I have one more. Okay. Hopefully this time. But uh, the last thing that people can do that can be really helpful is to reassure themselves mm -hmm. because anxiety is very I don't know if it's a word, but unassuring. <laughs> and, you know, it gets us to worry a great deal about things that haven't even occurred and may not occur. And yeah. so when we reassure ourselves, it's, it's a way of mm, undermining what it is that anxiety is trying to do. And so one of my favorite sort of self-talk phrases that people find very reassuring is they can remind themselves that no matter what happens, I'll deal with it. Hmm. And so that doesn't mean it'll be pretty, that doesn't mean it'll be perfect, <laughs> but it is a way to remind yourself that anxiety is trying to get you worked up about something that maybe, you know, you're thinking you can't handle or aren't ready for. And um, being able to at least balance your thoughts with regular reminders that no matter what happens, you'll deal with it. I love, I'm kind of been stuck on that statement that you said, like um, doing some of these things is undermining what anxiety is trying to do. I love that picture. Just kind of like, ha, I'm going to trip you up. You don't get to succeed this time. Even if it's for 30 seconds, you didn't get to have all the control this time. Hey. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I, I hate to see anxiety win. And so that's why I like these kinds of conversations. <laughs> it's a chance to undermine what it is anxiety does to people. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Thanks for spending some time and kind of digging into what negative thoughts are and some tips on how to manage them. Jennifer will be back <laughs> another time. <laughs> um, yeah, and we hope that you've enjoyed this video. Uh, Jennifer is working out of our office a couple of days a week. And uh, yeah, you can, if you want to reach out, you can reach us at info at panorama wellness group .ca or 778 726 0550. Thanks. Thank you. All right. See ya.